Hey everybody, it is uh, August 28th, out here doing some more uh, management of the property here. So a little bit, little bit of an update. I am soaking wet. I've been bush hogging. I started bush hogging earlier this week, just trying to get some stuff here done, caught up, and uh, getting the fields ready for the fall. So, you know, just, just mowing down uh, overgrown fields for the most part, having to go cut the new blackberries in for next year. So that way we have really good laid off rows of blackberries to pick from next year. Uh, kind of getting ready for hunting season whenever hunting season rolls around. So, you know, started disking up my food plot uh, earlier this week as well. So I'll show you that. I got to walk us to the other side of the property. But I did walk, I did uh, see when I was over here bush hogging earlier. I totally forgot this was here. But I remember back during, I went a deer. Anyway, <laughs> go figure. While I was picking blackberries this year, I totally forgot that I found this elderberry right here in this large clump of blackberries and it is absolutely loaded. I started picking elderberries yesterday over at my parents place. Um, so I'm going to come in here, I'm trying to see if I can see it up there but I can't. I'm going to come over here in just a little bit and uh, cut these clumps off and get them to the house. My daughter went through yesterday and she, she was getting all the uh, ripe berries off of the, the clusters of, of uh, berries here so got to get that done. Cicadas are going crazy. You know, when I was bush hogging, I saw all kinds of, uh, uh, what do you call them, praying mantis. Oh my lord, praying mantis everywhere. And they would just fly off in front of me and fly over into the other high grass around me. So you can see back here behind me, I leave strips of high grass whenever I do this mowing here. And so the reason for that is, is there's all kinds of, uh, uh, what is it, goldenrod and ragweed and uh, Queen Anne's lace and all kinds of stuff out here and so that works really well for the pollinators they're all over that the rabbits uh burrow and, and nest and rest in this in these rows of high stuff that i leave the praying mantis and all the other bugs and grasshoppers and things they just live along the edges and that gives an a, a area for the turkeys to walk along so the turkeys will walk along those edges picking and eating bugs off of them the deer will feed along those edges as well so i've talked about edges in most all my property management videos so I'm not bush hogging the whole farm. You know, a lot of people say, well, you're bush hogging the wrong time of year, or why are you taking care, why are you uh, bush hogging all the cover and the protection? And I'm not. I just, I just bush hog, I bush hog the farm in stages and I leave various uh, kind of stages of growth all over the farm to give the wildlife somewhere to, uh, some variety, you know, because some, some like, fresh cut green. The deer like to come in and browse on the fresh green. The turkeys like the edges. The deer like a different uh, level as well where they can bed in it. So, and the fawns are getting bigger now. They're getting to be a lot more mobile and getting around. So I like to leave variety. I don't bush hog the whole blasted farm. I just bush hog sections of it. So I'll work my way over here and uh, show you the other section where I've been working on today too. It is hot. It's like 93 degrees and uh, I think the feels like temperature said 97. I am soaking wet. Oh, one other thing to hit on as I'm walking over here. I talked about the praying mantis that I was seeing as I was bush hogging. And it never fails that there's a subset of people out there that want to jump on me for, for bush hogging, saying that uh, I'm going to eliminate all the praying mantis or whatever. I do this every year. I mow the farm on a rotation. I mow different sections of the farm in about five or six different phases. It's like this every year. I'm covered up with praying mantis every year. Um, it's not like I've eradicated them in the past however many years we've done this. Uh, and it's not going to happen now. Not by me bush hogging 15% uh, of the farm. Boy, that sun's bright right there. It's not going to eradicate the praying mantis just by me bush hogging a small section of the farm right now whatever i finish bush hogging this week will be all i'm going to do now it'll probably be november again before i bush hog again by that time most everything's gone dormant different things have happened but i cannot allow the entire farm to continue to grow and get out of control until november i have to keep things in some sort of you know control growth phase here and you know there's i have my own management strategy I've reviewed it with the local, with the, not the local, well, yeah, the local representative from the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. He's reviewed it. We've talked about it several times. They're in agreement that it's a good strategy, good plan. So just a little bit of thought on that. All right, man, that sun is bright and hot. Good Lord. Anyway, 
you can see behind me where I started putting the food plot in. Um, it's been about a week ago now, I guess. Yeah, what is today? Saturday? Yeah, it's a week ago today I started putting the food plot in. So you can see I'm starting to bush hog part of the other hilltop up here. So I'm bush hogging back and forth across the top here. I've got this section back over here partially bush hogged. I'm still leaving strips of blackberries that I'm going to, this is a lot of, there weren't any blackberries we picked off of this year. So this is all new stuff. I'm going to allow it to grow up and it'll mature. And then next year it's going to have blackberries on it. All the berries that I had picked off of this past year, we're going to bush hog or I'm going to bush hog down at some point in time, whether it be this week or in November or whenever it is. But anyway, so that's what we got going on here. I'm sitting here looking at a bunch of the persimmon trees. They are hanging full. I heard something. I don't know what it was. Persimmon trees are hanging full. Um, there's several of them already starting to turn kind of that orangey frosted color that they do before they start dropping. So this cluster of persimmon trees right here, they actually drop sooner than the other persimmon trees back over there do. These are actually very large, very mature. These are very large and old persimmon trees, and they produce some very large, very sweet fruit every year. And they're always, you know, a month or so earlier than the other persimmon trees. Anyway, I'll get over here and uh, get back to it today. Whew, I had to take a break. About overdid it earlier. I got really tired and shaky and had to go and take a little bit of time and hydrate and the wife fixed dinner. So uh, feeling a lot better now. Anyway, uh, I've had a couple people ask me to go over some of the, just kind of highlight some of the, the equipment that I use around here. One of them is a, a, a long time friend. Uh, he was actually a manager for a while there. So Victor, this is partially for you. Oh, that's dark again. Um, so what we got here, first of all, I hit this tractor. So this is the uh, Ford, I think it's a 3910. I think it's an 83 model. Um, <clears throat> so I use this on the steep hillside most of the time. This is kind of the workhorse tractor. This is the tractor we've had since we built the house out here. It's got big, big fluid filled tires on it. So it's really heavy. It doesn't, you know, it maintains traction. Its wheels are set as far apart as they can be. I mean, it's got a real wide stance on it and it's got that roll bar. So I use it for whenever I'm on the hillside, especially. It's only a two-wheel drive tractor, but um, I really need that whenever I'm uh, bush hogging this hillside because it's so, so steep and I bush hog it on a side hill. A lot of times this bush hog, which this is a six-foot bush hog sitting here at the back that I've got attached right now. This is what I do all my bush hogging with. It's pretty heavy. So a lot of times when I'm side hilling out through there, um, it's kind of pulling the rear end of the tractor down. So I'm, I go out the hill sideways but I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm facing uphill a little bit just because of the weight of the bush hog pulls me down. We just bought another tractor. Um, this is actually from a neighbor. He restores old tractors. So this is a Ford Power Master 840, or Ford 841 Power Master. I think it is a 50, 57 to 59, I think, uh, year model. He fully restored this tractor. So this is not going to be really a major work tractor. I, ha I did use it to disc up the food plot with, and I have used it to do the driveway. So I don't use it for, I got a gnat here. I don't use it for heavy duty farm work. It's a beautiful tractor. I'll get some close-ups of it, but uh, it's a beautiful tractor. It's fully restored. This was actually his show tractor. He took it all around this part of the country, take it, taking it to shows. He's got two or three more just like it. and. He said he needed to get rid of it. He's getting up in age. He knew that it was my favorite tractor, and we talked about it several times. And so, when he made me, uh, when he gave me a price on it, I just couldn't pass it up. But it's a stunning tractor. It gets the job done. It's a gas-powered two-wheel drive, um, so it doesn't have the same amount of torque, and it doesn't weigh as much as this tractor. And just because it's an old tractor, and it's just it's so, it just has that you know. I don't know that it about it that I can't explain it. It just has that feel about it. So I don't, I don't, I don't plan to use this thing heavy at all. I'll use it just a little bit just to keep it running, getting it out. I'll do my disking with it and I'll probably do my uh, driveway grading. For the most part, I'll probably just leave the bush hog hooked to this tractor all the time. And this one here will just be, you know, kind of my light duty for a fun tractor. Anyway, that was that was for you, Victor, because you you asked, and someone else messaged me not long ago, want me to go over the tractors. So we now have two tractors. We're a two tractor family. I told my wife it's funny. About ten years ago, 
we were a two BMW family. So she had a uh, she had a BMW X5, we, and I had a BMW uh, 3 Series, and we were bombing all over town in, in the BMWs. And about a year ago exactly, we became a two F-150 family because we, we got rid of the BMWs. We couldn't pay the premium for just the nameplate. And so we, we became two F-150 family, and I was like, now I tell her that now we have a his and hers tractor. Anyway, all right, I got to get back on this tractor. I got to get some diesel in it, and I got to get out and try to bush hog some more. I'm going to be running low on daylight here before long. So anyway, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, not a whole lot going on, just a lot of, lot of work. Hope you have a good day. Stay safe. God bless.